Oh my yes. God. <laughs> I'll mute you for now, Kim. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So let's get started. So I was just going to open up with introductions. I'm going to have <laughs> our panelists introduce themselves um, because I have that phenomenon where I forget things like in the moment, like names of resorts and such. So I'm going to let them go ahead and do it. And you panelists, um, please share why this is important to you. Just maybe check in even with how you're doing and how you're feeling um, would be good. And just, yeah, why you decided to help put this together um, and go from there. Okay. So feel free to, you know, go. Joanna, do you want to start? Yeah, sure. I'll start. Good morning, everybody. I agree with Kayla. It's funny without your faces, but it says there's 59 participants, so you're out there. Yes, I'm there. <laughs> yeah. So I'm Joanna Wallenberg, and I am a second generation resorter. We have Brookside Resort um, in north of Park Rapids. I'm right down the road from Kayla. Um, and honestly, I feel like these other three ladies below me on my screen know way more about the cleaning, and they're the ones that I go to. Um, they've helped me trans transition from traditional cleaning to um, less toxic cleaning. So honestly, what I did when I was starting to feel this pressure to go to bleach this year was I emailed them and said, help me, <laughs> help me fight, like fight the urge to just react quickly and go back to bleach. Um, and then, then we started zooming and then look, <laughs> look what we did. So um, I, I lean on them heavily, so I hope, I hope you all get a lot of information from them too. Um, you know, the reason I switched over, or one of, there's a few reasons, but as I said, I'm a second generation resorter. It might, I helped my mom do this um, my whole childhood, and my mom ended up getting breast cancer. I don't think that's any coincidence um, to what she did with chemicals. So I'm hoping to do a little different path for my family and myself. So yeah, well, we have a big resort too. Um, Keila was telling me to, that that's a good perspective to mention. We have 29 cabins. Um, so when I'm making these cleaning decisions, my brain is just calculating numbers quickly. I'm thinking, okay, if I need one for each cabin, that's 29 times 29. So um, my lens comes from this huge quantity too that I have to try to manage. So yeah. 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 I feel like that brings, I mean, a really great perspective. Like you are thinking, so I have 13 cabins. I have two crews of cleaning, you know, two cleaning crews. So you have to think of it on like a much broader scaled version. So I'm glad that you are sharing what you're thinking about and what you're doing. Thanks, Joanna. Okay, Timberly, you want to go next? Sure. I'll go. Um, so I am similar to you, Joanna, where I'm um, third generation of cleaning at the resort and um, grew up using Lysol and Pine Sol and did it with my kids on the floor on the high chairs and never thought twice about it um, and it wasn't really until uh, my I came down with hypothyroidism and also polycystic ovarian syndrome um, and I didn't really put two and two together and I can never really say that that's one cause the other but it certainly made me more aware of everything I was using so anything I was eating anything we were putting on our hands everything like that so cleaning was a big it's a big part of it. So if you look under like your kitchen sink, you see all these cleaning things usually. And if you start reading the backs of them, um, majority are like endocrine disruptors. So they affect your body, they affect your reproductive system. And I'm like, holy cow, that could be um, a big reason on why I had all these issues. My sister also has the exact same issues I have. So um, I don't know if it's this, if it's linked to that or not, but it certainly made us aware of it. And so I wanted something different, but I, growing up with Lysol, I had to smell good. It had to smell fresh. Um, it took my mom a long time to switch over because it had to smell good. Um, and so when we found Thieves, that was a huge thing um, for us because it smelled really good. And I knew it's plant-based, so I knew that it was not harming us. And um, there's also some beneficial properties. So it was kind of like you could clean and actually do good for your body. So for us, it was like win, 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 win. And um, we've loved it and done it ever since. And we have, you know, uh, 20 cabins. So it's definitely something, a price thing you have to think about as well. Um, but health is number one, like you don't get health back. So you have to really decide. And I think if you're here today, it's a concern to you. And so that's, that's great. It's your, it's, we can help you become aware of it. Um, good because any little steps you can to take now will be beneficial. I hope, you know, 
hopefully my kids turn out well. So far they seem okay, but make the changes. You know, when you know better, you'll do better. And so hopefully you'll learn some stuff today. So awesome. awesome. Thank you, Kelly. Um, Kelly, you want to go next? Sure. Good morning, everybody. <clears throat> I have Joe's Lodge Resort with my husband, Adam. We're actually right next door to Timberley. And she had invited me to an all natural cleaning class um, probably about a year and a half ago. So she taught me everything that I know about all natural cleaning. So then I could just defer to her on questions. See what I did there? But no, <laughs> we've been using <clears throat> these products, like I said, for a year and a half and just kind of took all the chemicals out of our house. But what really spoke to me in her class was you know, these products that you're using are harmful to you. And I thought, wait a minute. So when I was cleaning out that bathtub with those chemicals and my lungs were burning and my mom said, make sure you wear gloves and you keep the door open and the vent on, but my lungs are burning. I can only do like 10 minutes at a time. Like, hmm, but maybe that wasn't good for me. <laughs> Makes sense. Mm -hmm. So anyways, we uh, switched out all of our cleaning products and detoxified our home. And we feel so much better in general, not mm -hmm. just like more energetic. It's kind of interesting how all these chemicals can kind of poison your air and your environment that you're living in. <clears throat> so we've kind of slowly introduced that to the resort. Our, some of our cleaners are pretty resistant to it, but we have the products available. And um, I don't know, it's, it's also better for the environment and for your guests too. And if you think about it, <clears throat> your pets are walking on your floors and you're having these chemicals on and uh, my dog used to kind of lick his paws and uh, bite his paws and have allergies and once we started switching to this he stopped doing that so it's pretty amazing <clears throat> but huh that's super interesting well yeah. thanks Kelly I I uh messaged her super late last night she's like sure I'll be on so thanks for being so flexible Kelly <laughs> um and, oh, Kelly also has a new baby. So she warned me. Congratulations. I Adam. do like I keep muting myself. So I might have to dip out a couple of times just yeah. to go. Uh, we, we get it. Totally understand. <sighs> I already heard my kid like trying to open the locked door. So <laughs> it happened here too. But, um, okay, Kim, let's give you a try. I'm going to unmute you. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Woohoo. Yes. And you All right. Gorgeous, like yeah. absolutely stunning. Yes, thanks. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> She's making fun because the last couple times I have a terrible camera on my laptop and it's just staticky and horrible and that. Anyway, that is not why. But <laughs> <laughs> so um, I don't have a whole lot more to add. Just thank you for asking me to do this because it really has forced me to uh, get on the bandwagon of researching what I am going to use personally. And so I've spent hours and hours and hours really researching things that I already have here in my, in my uh, resort arsenal. And uh, I found that I actually have some things here already that I'm using that are EPA approved. I was excited about that. And then I also delved into how to use those pieces. So I'm so grateful. Thank you for um, asking me and for us to get together because it's really uh, helped me be active in particular when this last week has been a little overwhelming. I don't know about you guys, but um, it's been a little overwhelming for a while. So my, just briefly, um, I've been using uh, and making my own natural cleaning things for 25 years, I think. So it started in uh, my landlord business back in, uh, in Iowa. We had a bunch of apartments back in Newton, Iowa. We had 111 of them. And uh, I was cleaning ovens with oven cleaner and thought I was going to die a couple of times and thought, surely there's some better things out there. And the more you learn, the more you, you change your habits. So um, I don't mean, I don't want to proselytize or preach or anything um, at all. Um, I did a, a series of non-toxic cleaning articles in the CMR magazine years ago, about a decade or so ago, and then sort of dropped off the radar because I, other people are taking up the band, the the, the banner. So I'm, I'm happy about that. I think one of the surprising things that people who um, do not use non-toxic um, chemicals and they're still buying their things from over the counter at Walmart or Target or pharmacies or online. I think one of the surprising things is how uh, less expensive um, a lot of these non-toxic items are. I think there's, there may be a, a little bit of a, a misapprehension that it's going to be more expensive to use these non-toxic kinds of things. And that's not true. You can actually save money and do yourself a favor uh, by using some non-toxic things. So that's what I've got to offer at the moment. Thank you for putting this on, by the way, Kayla. I really appreciate well, it. Thank you. I mean, you guys did just as much. So I appreciate it. Um, 
Okay, so I think let's jump right in. So how we're gonna do it, I think we're gonna kind of go from each person. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and turn off video for Kelly, Timberly, and Joanna. And Kim, I think we'll just start with you, um, if that works. Um, Timberly, Joanna, feel free to mute yourself. Um, and then you can, if you wanna hop in at any point, you know, just let me know. Um, so yeah, go ahead, Kim. Well, um, so I had sort of a, uh, I saw your agenda this morning, so you guide me, or otherwise I'll just sure. jump in how I suggested last night. So you tell me, honey, how would you like to do it? Okay, I will. Yes. So I'm going to let you dive into all your stuff. Um, <laughs> okay. So, yes, yeah, so you're, going, you're going first. So quick outline for the call. So um, we're going to jump with, um, we're going to start with Kim. Um, she's going to outline some of those things, those burning questions that we've all had have kind of been bouncing around on the chat line regarding ozone, regarding UV lights. And then Kim is also going to go through, she's been putting a lot of research together for you all um, regarding okay. EPA comparisons. Um, and then also, Kim, there's been a lot of questions, and we can get to this later in the call too when we get to bedding and stuff but um, regarding foggers. Um, and then we just wanna hear, so now what do you plan to use and how do you plan to do it? So we'll start with you, Kim, and then we'll jump right. to Timberly to do the same thing. So what's Timberly gonna do and how is she plan to do it? Then we'll go to Joanna. What is Joanna gonna use? How does she plan to do it? Um, and then we'll just go over from there some other um, just, inside the cabin things so and this is i mean really opening it up for questions and what everyone is thinking here and there but um okay so like from there we'll talk about what our cleaners how are we protecting our cleaners um and then time frames how do we plan to do it we'll talk about those things all together and then at the very <clears throat> last i think conversation we'll jump into specific blankets and laundry um does that work kim so skip that part for right now sounds um, great I think okay. that's it. And one thing too, I wanted to say, so like I said earlier, I'm really, I mean, I'm relatively new. This will be my third season. I honest to God did not know how to clean until I came here and Jennifer Bateman taught me how to clean. Um, and my house is still a disaster. Like I don't clean my own house. <laughs> but, um, anyway, the whole reason why I wanted to switch to non-toxic, we, we used one non-toxic, but then we also had a variety of other uh, traditional ones that we'd use for different things. My favorite out of all of them was the non-toxic option. It's called red juice. I'll talk about it a little bit later. And so that was my favorite. And same thing that Kelly was talking about when I was cleaning showers and things like that, I just, I couldn't breathe. And so at a certain point I was like, okay, this, this can't be good. You know, by the time you're doing it for how many hours, six to eight hours or whatever, Plus, okay, so this is like the marketing side of me. When I was trying to hire a whole new team of cleaners, I was thinking, how am I going to get cleaners that may already know what they're doing, but they're concerned about the chemicals? So, you know, in my application process, I made it about we will be using non-toxic cleaners um, so that they would feel safe, hoping that I would get some, you know, cleaners that would really be a good fit for my team, as well as protecting them. So kind of the other side of things. Kim, I am going to turn off my video and turn it completely over to you. Oh, but I'm right here. If Good. you want me to share my screen as you're going through things, I certainly can do that. That'd be great. Yes, because okay. I can't on my Kindle. Thank you, dear. That'd be wonderful. Okay, yep. <laughs> I will just follow your lead then as you talk about things. Uh, let, me, let me go over the, uh, the PDF I made of the uh, ozone machine stuff. Um, I figure two seconds on this thing. Um, there's been a lot of chat on the chat line about ozone machines, uh, ultraviolet lights, air purifiers, that kind of thing. Lots of chat back and forth. And I just wanted to share what I found about it. Uh, the EPA uh, does not routinely review the safety or efficacy of these things because they are machines. They're not chemicals. And that's why there isn't uh, that, their seal of approval on it. So trying to find information, there's so much information actually on ultraviolet lights, on air purifiers, and oh my gosh, it's overwhelming the information out there. So um, because I don't have an ultraviolet light, I just didn't go down that rabbit hole. 
and I'm sure that other people, as they're finding information, I'm sure they'll share that along with air purifiers. Now, I do happen to have an ozone machine. In fact, I have four, and I've been using them for ever since I was back in the apartment business um, back in the uh, late 90s. And the ozone machines uh, worked really well for all kinds of stinky things. Um, we had a, uh, for example, somebody uh, escaped their apartment or they didn't pay their rent, they left, and we found out about it weeks later, um, a couple weeks anyway, and their electric they hadn't paid their electricity, so they had left meat in the refrigerator. It was a horrible smell, and uh, we cleaned it out, and it just reeked. We put the ozone machine in there, and it worked great. So ever since then, we've been uh, using those ozone machines for deodorizers, uh, for molds, that kinds of thing. So um, I was researching about the COVID thing, and uh, there actually have been some scientific studies showing that it can be very effective. However, what I was running into trouble is that they didn't quantify or qualify how those ozone machines worked exactly. So I've got like three or four different models. Um, you know, because the coronavirus is so new, you know, there's no real testing ground yet. So it's been shown to, to um, help with uh, breaking down and killing similar viruses. So we assume that it'll probably work on this one. But assumption is not the real thing, right? It's unlike some of these other things that we'll get to in just a minute that are actually these chemicals or cleaning solutions that are actually approved by the EPA. And there's actual directions on how to, you spray this stuff, you dilute it down to this uh, solution, you spray it on, the dwell time is either one minute, two minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes, boom, you know, you're good to go. Ozone machine, not so much. So my advice there is if you've already got the machines, go ahead and use them, promote them to your guests, but I'm not sure if I didn't have an ozone machine right now, I don't think I would spend the money on it just because you don't know how long to run it in your cabins to be effective. Boom, there you go. And there's a whole PDF on that that Kayla's showing you if you want a, a few more pieces of information and some research on those actual studies that I was re researching, you can go and off on your own and research that. So moving on to actual non-toxic dis disinfectants approved by the EPA, um, I found one, two, three, four, five, six that I wanted to talk about specifically, um, doing some research there. Um, one product that's been on the chat line quite a bit here is a, a product called Force of Nature. I actually have been, I've had that for a couple of, of years. Uh, Kayla, that's the comparison chart for EPA, which we could talk about if you'd like, um, but I think mostly people can, uh, let's go to the non-toxic, yeah, thanks. So Force of Nature, uh, Lori Yesrick has been talking about a lot. Um, I use it too. It's got a, a very little scent. It actually kind of smells a little bit like ozone, actually. Um, I, I used it on a, a rug and a love seat in cabin 19 where some poor teenager or some guy had just horrible foot odor. It was just bleh, funky, awful. I used peroxide, I used other products, but I did use the Force of Nature a couple of times, saturated the area, and it did take care of the the, uh, odor. So it does work for odors, but it is also approved for dealing with COVID. I was really happy to see that on the EPA's list of uh, the end list of approved chemicals. So that was great. So I already have it. Um, my, uh, when I'm thinking about using it for this summer, my only caveat is I think I might just get another a uh, little charger stand, because how you use it is it comes in these bottles, but you can use your own bottles, and it comes with these little capsules, and you set it on the charger, and you open up a little capsule, and it's just basically vinegar, salt, and something else. You put it in your tap water filled bottle, plug it in, and it charges for about six to eight minutes. So the bottle's not very big, you know, it, it takes a little time to get it done. So if I had to make like 19 different bottles for 19 different cabins, that's a couple of hours of my time to create that stuff. So I would love to have Lori's intake on that if she's on the uh, call but, uh, today. I would love to see her insight and have some of her suggestions on that. But I do recommend it, I guess, because I it's, it's certainly easy to use. Um, it's innocuous enough and it will work on COVID. So. Lori is here, by the way. She just raised her hand. Oh, great. Fantastic. Let's talk to her a little bit. Let's find Lori. Okay. Um, yeah. Lori, you are unmuted. 
Hi, Lori. Hey, guys. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm good. What What I've done is I I have two chargers now, and I got extra <laughs> bottles, and I make it up in advance. So I, I get as many bottles going while the girls are here, because my cleaning girls have been surprised at how much um, dirt it gets out that other cleaners aren't getting out, and it's safe, which is so weird to me. And then when one's empty, I have them run it back up. So I just kind of keep them going all day while they're here. Gotcha. Good. Awesome. Well, and they, the, the new model is a little bit easier to work with. I don't know what you have, Kim. They're, they're, they had one where you had like this little lid that you flipped up. Yes. No? Okay. The, and the, the top always broke off. No, the new yes. ones have, have an open top. And Got it. I, I do have a cute for like 40 at least 40 percent off for anybody that wants it and then they give me some free capsules it doesn't matter one way or another i have like 50 capsules right now i figured 50 bottles that'll get me going for a while um i'm thrilled with the stuff mm -hmm. okay great oh. awesome. so there's that that's a product that's pretty easily available i think and uh certainly something to think about. What I'm wondering right now, it just occurs to me to ask Lori or, or whoever else that's been using Force of Nature, do you think that just using this for a cleaner uh, will be sufficient for disinfection? Or do you think that you're going to go ahead and do your cleaning and then spray it back on and let it dwell for its, I got to go look here, I think two to 10 minutes is what you're supposed to use for any of the, most of these disinfectants you need to kind of let it air dry from what I right. understand what I'm Any... gonna do for um, soft surfaces is I found at Target seventh generation has got an antiviral antibacterial spray yep. that's what I'm gonna use on fabric that's okay. what I'm gonna use on my mattresses and my pillows and gotcha. yada yada all that stuff okay and I've actually got that on my list we'll get to that in a second that sounds good to me okay awesome. thank you Lori yeah Feel yes, free to thank raise you. Raise your hand at any point if you have something to add. That's perfect. So the next thing on our list, well, why don't, uh, well, I'll just go down the list because it's easier. So hydrogen peroxide, this was uh, one that is cross-referenced everywhere. Uh, there's so much research on just plain old hydrogen peroxide. It's unbelievable. And uh, I, I happen to have a whole bunch of supply already, so that's what I'm going to use as my overall disinfectant uh, because I've got a 35% grade jug. And so I will be diluting that down into a 3% um, because EPA has approved that you only need a 3% solution, which is those little brown bottles that you would buy at any drugstore. That will work full strength at 3%. Just put it in your cleaning bottles and you can use that as a disinfectant to kill coronavirus right now. What you need to do is you need to spray it on your hard surfaces. It's safer around plates and dishware, uh, refrigerators, all that kind of stuff. Let it just evaporate uh, naturally and that should that should take care of the issue. It's relatively inexpensive. The, the trouble right now is finding it. <laughs> I, I just like the alcohol, rubbing alcohol like we'll get to next, that's been a, a, an issue. But if you have a source of it, um, you can certainly, especially concentrated, I see on Amazon, you can still get concentrated hydrogen peroxide, either 12% or the 35%, both food grade or non-food grade, doesn't make any difference. But for example, you just gotta calculate or figure out what your dilution rate is to get that 3%, because that's really all you're gonna need. So for example, my 35% grade, gallon will make me 13 gallons of diluted with tap water, 3% hydrogen peroxide. And I'll talk a little bit later, but I think that's probably what I'm going to use in my fogging machine uh, to put on everything, um, except for my upholstered things. And because uh, hydrogen peroxide is a natural clean uh, bleaching agent, you might not want to repeatedly put it on upholstered things just because it might fade things very, very quickly up to you to decide, but that's just one thing. I don't know if anybody has anything to add on that, or maybe we can get to it later, but that was, uh, the hydrogen peroxide was, I thought, a very common denominator thing, very easily available for, for most people, and um, relatively inexpensive. Okay, another one on our list is isopropyl alcohol. 
uh, that one generally is easily available. Right now it is not. <laughs> um, the tricky things about this, I just wanted to point out what I've been reading. So EPA, CDC, they um, are seeing all kinds of homemade recipes about hand sanitizers and uh, disinfectants and uh, people just, they, they're covering their butts and making sure that people are aware that it has to be a 70% grade alcohol to do to be of any effect on COVID-19. And unfortunately, a lot of the recipes out there uh, on Pinterest and other social media outlets are for vodkas, for instance, or other kinds of clear alcohols, because that's what is re readily available right now when you can't get to a drugstore. Now that now you can, but you people have not been able to get to it. And unfortunately, for example, Tito's Vodka has even put out a statement on their website saying, you know, our alcohol is not going to be sufficient to, our vodka is only 80 proof, which means it's only 40% alcohol, and it's not going to be effective against the coronavirus. So um, there are some solutions out there that maybe we can talk about. Timberly has one that I thought was quite unique, and maybe we'll get to that at some point, because um, I loved her recipe. Uh, an interesting take on that. But it, if you can get a hold of alcohol, it, it is effective. It is approved by the EPA and CDC to, uh, to uh, kill the coronavirus. Again, if it's too, um, like 99% alcohol will probably not work. The reason why is because it evaporates too quickly. So if you are gonna use isopropyl or, or some kind of alcohol, you need to make sure it's right around 70% because that way it will dwell long enough on the surface for it to kill the virus. Okay, there's that one. Uh, three more on the next page. Uh, seventh generation, Lori was just uh, intimating that she's using it. Um, I did see a couple of sources where I can get it too. Uh, seventh generation does have several products that are approved by the EPA. Uh, they, they work on thyme oil, essentially, or there's some other herbs too that have thyme oils in them and they have been approved and uh, apparently effective in killing the coronavirus. So those are uh, somewhat available depending on where you go, um, but they do smell good. They smell like herbs, just so you're aware. Uh, the next one is Nixol. That's a new one on me. This one, I spent a lot of time researching. Uh, it seems like this is very similar to kind of what the force of nature people were doing. They have found a way to uh, take uh, tap water and salt and somehow oxidize it. And it has now been approved by the EPA that it will kill the coronavirus. One of the downsides to using this product is that it has a very short shelf life just like the force of nature. So short being relative, right? So um, force of nature, when you make your bottle, you can use that up within two weeks. After that, it's no longer approved as a, a qualified disinfectant. So you do need to make sure you use up your liquid within two weeks. And sometimes I think that might be a hard thing to get used to. It's just one of those things, if you decide you're gonna go for that, you just need to keep track of that. Nixol is the same. Uh, it comes uh, one, and these gallon kinds of things, and you can mix it with one part of the gallon and to 1.5 parts water. And then you need to use it up within 30 days of its manufacturing date. So you have to kind of look at the manufacturing or expiration date on the jug and use it up quickly. It's not something that you would get and store and then have for the whole summer. So that might be slightly problematic, but it's relatively inexpensive and it looks like it's highly effective. Also, one unique thing about this one, um, in terms of some of the other ones, like I'll talk about Solugar in a second, um, you don't need to use any protective pieces. Um, when I talk about essential oils and things of that nature, if you're fogging or really getting it into the air, um, you might have some reactions to the oils, um, thyme in particular, is sort of an irritant to skin sometimes. So if you're fogging it, for instance, and using a lot of it, you might want to wear a mask or you know, try to protect yourself. Whereas the Nixol, uh, the force of nature, hydrogen peroxide, you do not. You can just spray the crap out of it and breathe it in and it's not going to affect you. Very inert. 
And then lastly, I'm sure this will get into, hopefully Kayla will shed some light on this too, or anyone else. SoluGuard is a product by Melaleuca. I have actually personally been using it also for about 25 years. I don't use it a whole heck of a lot. How I've been using the disinfectant here also it has a thymol in it, which comes from thyme, essentially thyme plants and some other botanicals. But I've been using it for my shower curtains is how I've been using it. So uh, we change out our shower curtains every other week anyway. And I like to put a little bit of SoluGuard into the wash. It helps them smell fresher. And then I know it's getting the mold out of my shower curtains. And now that I've been learning about it through EPA and researching that it is approved by the EPA to combat and kill the coronavirus. So if you have a, a supplier um, or if you're already a Melaleuca person, you can get it a little bit cheaper through by being a member. Um, you can buy it also through eBay, which I have in the past uh, and Amazon, but it's gonna be about twice as much as if you were to get it directly. So it's good smelling stuff. I highly recommend it. I've also used it for steam cleaning. Our carpets, we usually just use vinegar and SoluGuard when, when uh, steam cleaning carpets. That would be another thing to do if you've got a deodorization issue too, or if you've got a mold issue. It certainly works very, very well on that. So those are those six things that are approved by the EPA at the moment. And Kayla, can you shed some more light maybe about the SoluGuard since I know you are also using it? Yeah, sure. Um, thank you, Kim, for going through all that too. So I switched to Melaleuca last year. I still use my favorite red juice, um, but then I also decided to um, add in Melaleuca. I actually got an, one of my best cleaners was a fan of Melaleuca and that's kind of how I got her. Um, I learned about this from Bonnie Brand, who's also um, on the call. She said her cleaners really like it. So I, I did like Melaleuca. Honestly, it smells amazing. I hate fake fragrances. It gives me a headache like, instantly. This stuff smells so good. Um, I will say though, I mean, just to be quite honest with you, I don't think I'm going to use this this year only because if you look on, if you look on the list right here, it shows that you have to let it stand for 10 minutes to disinfect. Um, so that's my biggest, it has to basically be wet for 10 minutes. So if that's going to be an issue, then, you know, so I'm probably going to switch to a different thing that you know, Timberly will be talking through a little bit, but um, also pricing. I looked up a little bit more for you, Kim. So it's about 56 cents an ounce if you buy it in um, like a two pack, if you're a member. And like she said, it's about double the price if you're not a member. So gotcha. um, yeah, that's one thing. So I loved the products last year. I really did. Um, but I probably will be switching. This year. So, Interesting. Yeah. So one comment just to follow up on your dwell time. Um, if you want to put up that EPA chart that you yeah. had originally put up, you will mm -hmm. see that almost everything on there has got a dwell time of about 10 minutes, including oh, bleach. Mm -hmm. What about the hydrogen peroxide? Did that too? Well, it does. So it's also on that. There you go. That screen right there, which by the way, everybody out there, I'm just sending out the PDFs to the board. Oh, so not the board wrong one, uh, resorter group. So everybody can look at these same pieces that that Kayla is looking at. There you go. So it's just sent out there. If you're looking at your emails, you can look at any one of these PDFs that she uh, is showing us. But as you can see, dwell time for almost all of them is, is gonna be right around 10 minutes. Do I need to scroll down? Uh, um, let's see. Yeah. Oh yeah, here we go, dwell time. Okay, all right, that's good to know. Maybe I won't necessarily jump to switching. Well, we'll see. Right, um, right. yep. Okay, so there are a couple questions, Kim. Let's go ahead and answer. Um, Lee, I see your question about having issues with scent. No, because these are completely natural. I myself am highly sensitive to I mean, probably, I'm not allergic like other people are, so it's probably a little bit different, but I, I mean, I instantly can get a headache from anything that's fake smelling. So, um, this honestly, my cleaners love it. They, they honestly, they want to use it because it smells so good. 
Um, so no, I've had no issues with any of the Melaleuca products. Um, really, they've just, they've been great. They take care of, you know, the lingering scent from the previous gas. Um, good question. Uh, Kim and, or Lori, there is a question from Sandra Mertz. It asks, or she asks, can you use force of nature on soft surfaces like upholstered furniture? Yes, absolutely. In fact, that's exactly what I, what I used it for when I was trying to eradicate that issue of foot odor that was ground into my, my rug and my love seat. So awesome. yes, you can okay. use that on there. And as for scent too, so force of nature really has no scent at all. The isopropyl alcohol, obviously rubbing alcohol, you know what that smells like. Um, hydrogen peroxide really has no odor. Nixol has no odor. So the seventh generation products and the Solugard both have thyme in them. So if you've grown herbs in your garden, that is the, sm the same exact smell that you are gonna be smelling for those kinds of products. Just to give you guys um, a an idea there. And I see another question about, is this a two-step process or is this a one-step process? It's a good question. And so right now in a COVID-19 environment, disinfecting is different step than cleaning. So yes, we are talking about a two-step process, I think. Um, you, all of the recommendations from e, uh, the EPA, um, where I read even using bleach products um, or any other kind of over-the-counter chemical product, it's the same thing. You need to remove the soil, the dirt, the crud first out of the environment and then spray it with your disinfectant, whatever you, of, of your, whatever you choose, and leave it to dwell for its recommended time on the bottle or like hydrogen peroxide, alcohol, any of those there, it's gonna be right around 10 minutes. So, or let it dry naturally. That will be enough. Okay. okay. Thing that I found when I was looking up too, like if you truly want it to disinfect, it has, you have to do that and it has to stay wet during that dwell time. Correct. So that's, yeah, in mind. Same thing, I mentioned the red juice um, before, that's uh, with, it's called the clean team. It's a non-toxic um, cleaner as well. Same thing, first step would be red juice, get rid of that crud. Second step would be the disinfectant. Um, right. So I am going to go ahead and open up uh, the rest of our panelists. Um, if you guys, if anyone has any questions right now, feel free. Um, Ad or anything like that right now and then from there we'll move on and Kimberly will share a little bit about what she's doing um, so feel free to raise your hand if you want to ask an audible question right now um, or otherwise we'll just keep going through the Q&A um, so um, as you guys can see there's a couple questions Kathy asked oh no we answered that one um, Thunder Lake Lodge, is there a disinfectant that you can use for both soft and hard surfaces? Um, does anyone want to take that? We'll get to it maybe. Oh, hi Kelly and maybe. <laughs> okay, maybe we'll, we'll get to that. Um, and then, oh, Kim, do you want to talk through soccer, or would you rather do that when we get to bedding? Honest, honestly, I really don't have anything to share on that. I have okay. a fogger. I have a Mr. Fogger that I bought last year to uh, distribute a liquid mosquito repellent on the lawn. So it's a liquid based, basically it's garlic oil. And I, I was informed about this from Scott and Sue Springer at Pike Point Lodge. So, um, I think one of their relatives also is a proponent of this stuff or maybe works for the company, but I never got a chance to use it. So the fogger is actually still in the packaging and I was just reading through the instruction manual and getting it together. It's pretty fierce. It's gonna have like a, but it has a dial on it and I think it will be effective. And what I'm thinking right now is because I have such a large supply of hydrogen peroxide, I'll probably use that and just go in and spray everything down. Uh, dishes, um, I might even try the Nixol. Um, it depends on what I've got left over. I don't wanna lay out a whole bunch of more money right now, so I wanna use up what I've got. Mm -hmm. And I think I'm not gonna be shying away from 
the upholstery right now, at least for the first couple of weeks while I try out the machinery. When I looked on Amazon, there are a ton of foggers out there. So I can't really give you any insights of which one will work because I have not used my own before. Uh, the only thing I can tell, tell you is um, when we go to Hawaii every year, we rent a cottage in Puako on the big island. And we've been doing that for about six, seven years now. And the guy and his wife that own it, we've become very good friends. But he has a little stainless steel fogger, and that's what he uses with his essential oils. He actually fogs the crap. He closes all the windows in the little two-bedroom cottage, and he fogs everything. And he just sprays whatever he's got on hand, thieves, um, thymes, oreganos, some really strong stuff. Uh, and because it's such a strong uh, concoction, he does use protective uh, things that he got from Menards or Home Depot. He, he suits up and wears his mask and his goggles and his plate and he'll just go in there and spray the crap out of all the dishes and the soft surfaces and uh it, it smells pretty good while he's in there but if you're smelling that at such a high level it can affect your health even essential oils so be careful using that kind of thing but after about a half an hour he says he'll go in and open up all the windows and by the time we arrive i don't even smell it which is shocking to me because i've used essential oils for a long time particularly around windows and doorways as a natural insect repellent. And I sometimes smell it, I mean, guests comment on it. And I, I think they like the fresh smell. It smells like, you know, it's been a freshly cleaned cabin, but I, I don't smell anything when I arrive at his cabin. So I, because of that experience, I'm not uh, projecting any harsh smells when using my essential oils when I'm using my fogger. So there you go. Okay. What do other people have to say? Maybe Kim, when um, someone else is going, could, could you get it and show us it? Just because I'm so curious of what it looks like. Uh, Over. Let's see. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Thanks. That's helpful. So, like, a, like a commercial steamer. Okay. This is a Mr. Um, Fogger. So it's supposed. It's in intended to fog or spray liquid. Um, it's also intended for uh, granules too. But I was going to use it for the liquid thing. Oh gosh, I. So I'm. It's a little backpack. About, yeah, I want one of those, but you're gonna have to like. There's gonna have to be one person assigned to one or two people, or I mean, and I only have 13 cabins. Yep, I'm worried about that too, frankly. Just double. Go so ahead. That's where anyone. Joanna, I'm worried, about, I'm worried about that too, by the way. I'll, I'll, one, one little thing, and I'm thinking more and more about doing what we'll talk about a little bit later, and that is having guests leave earlier, like maybe on Friday instead of Saturday. So we'll talk about that a little bit more later, but that's the only way I can see putting that extra step in. And I was talking to one of my best friends last night. He's like, you know what? If, you're, if you are telling people that you are serious about keeping them safe, surely guests are not gonna bitch and whine too much about you protecting their safety and asking them to leave one night early. Right. That was his perspective. Okay. Okay, anyone else um, want to speak up right now or otherwise we will transition to what Timberly's thinking? Can I, I'm reading all these comments and questions. Perfect. Yes. It's bringing up more questions for me, so I don't have an answer. I really want to ask a yeah. question that I want answered. Um, somebody wrote something about having a first housekeeper come through and disinfect before. Yeah. But someone correct me. Am I, don't, do you have to clean then disinfect? Does it matter? Help me out on that piece. You my comment on, right? go ahead. No, you go ahead, Kim, sorry. So my comment on that would be if you want to protect your staff, because you're worried that they will be exposed, um, then you might want to disinfect a little bit um, for that. Um, I'm looking at, so the Minnesota Department of Health in their cleaning guidelines right now to help with COVID, they are suggesting that we immediately open up as many windows as we can as soon as guests have departed. Their first recommendation is to uh, wait to clean the cabin or hotel room for 24 hours, which I thought was an interesting, I don't know where they came up with that figure, but what it says on the Minnesota Department of Health cleaning guidelines is if you can wait 24 hours before sending staff in and other guests. If you cannot wait, 
then the recommendation is to open all the windows, get some circulation going, that kind of thing. So um, I probably am not going to, and also they, they recommend not shaking out all your bedding, that kind of thing. And there's some other steps that maybe we can talk about a little bit later. Um, but uh, most of us are going to find that time crunch to be an issue. So um, I'm, I'm going to just really ask my staff to wear their masks and I'm not going to disinfect first. I'm going to wait to, to leave it. If I set my papers in order from the Department of Health, I think I was reading it too. If I read it correctly, it was um, rooms being used for COVID-19 quarantine. They recommended the 24 hours or am I reading that wrong, you guys? Or did I get my papers out of order? But no, rooms thought... have not been used for quarantine or knowingly exposed, which who knows? But, who knows? Um, anyway, that's how I was reading it, Kim. Uh, nope, there's a new thing out that they're oh, recommending. That. Okay, okay. Yep, it was just out. Um, Jim, our office manager, put it out a link yesterday, I think, and he also put it out a couple days before. I gave it to Kayla. Maybe I'll put it. I'll put it back on right now to the board again, so that people can look at that. Okay. Yeah, I guess I don't have that one. Yep. There's, so there's a couple more questions. Just wanting clarification on the disinfecting. I found this like super helpful, just because I'm a I like to visualize things more than um, just talking it out. So this is just um, that same company that I was talking about that I get the red juice from. So they explain how to do it three steps. You clean first um, before you disinfect. So you get rid of that dirt, you get rid of that grime. Um, and this is with any product. This is, this is just, they put this out. And then you, step two, you spray and spray. You don't spray and wipe, you follow directions of the, of the disinfectant, which is typically you keep it wet. Um, so spray with the disinfectant and you let that dwell the entire time. Um, and then just as a note, uh, this is kind of a side note, but if you're using sanitizing wipes, just remember that, you know, that wipe is no longer sanitized by your, you know, third wipe or so. So, um, so I don't know, just to like clear up some of the questions, I think fogging, I think what Kim is saying, correct me if I'm wrong, Kim, you would only fog a cabin first if you knowingly have a guest that has COVID and you want to protect everyone in there, you're going to walk in there with a the fogger first. That is not going to be your first step, though, on a no. Okay. Correct. Not okay. a first step, unless I was really worried about my staff. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So, Joseph, just to answer that, um, and Emily's question about dwell time, um, maybe Timberly, can I go to you for that one? Do you see Emily Neely's question? Uh, let's see here. Yep. So, so it says for the, it yep. uh, with the dwell time issue, does misting spraying get the surface wet enough or do you need a soap cloth to wipe surfaces down? I think like what you mentioned or kind of the, the steps like we're going to do is we'll wash things first and then you disinfect, let it sit and air dry. Um, I think if you look at the Minnesota Department of Health, that's kind of what they're saying is you leave the disinfectant on there, it air dries, and then that's what helps kill the virus. Um, so that's kind of what the steps we're also going to take, um, answering that question anyways. Yeah. Okay. Um, sounds good. Well, let's, so some of these questions I see about hydrogen peroxide um, and dish soap, Kimberly's going to get to in her part of it. Um, Joanna and Kim, do you have anything to add before I shut your video off? Oh, no. Great. Thank you. Okay, Go to I'm going to mute you, Kim, and shut your video off. And Joanna, I'm going to shut you off. Thank you all. Thank you all. Um, okay. Timberly, I'm going to you. You let me know if you need anything, but I'm going to shut my video off too, if that's okay. Yeah, no, that's fine. Okay. Yeah. So, um, okay. So listening to this gets me a little shaky. And so I want to throw out there that I think the majority of us clean probably better than many, many people and probably most of the guests at State Art Resort. Um, so take everything that's coming out today with a grain of salt. Um, just calm down. And I, some of this stuff, it's just so overwhelming. And I think we're going to freak out our, and get a little cuckoo if we don't just breathe a little bit. We clean really well, guys. We do a really good job all the time. So what we need to do this year is just step things up a little bit. Like don't 
don't go crazy and and stress yourself out because stress one is not good for us right so don't do that um yes we're going to probably have to take an extra step and that's kind of what we're talking about but please just try and remember that most of you know most of the things that you use are going to clean well um coronavirus is like a lot of other viruses out there and we clean really well for influenza and for strep throat and all this stuff anyways that could be in our cabin. So just remember that you guys are cleaning really well. So don't go cuckoo. Okay. So that being said, um, I just wanted to touch on just a little bit about, you know, obviously you're here to learn about some healthier versions. And so one of the things that I want to talk about is why, like what is in the cleaners that we might've been using. So um, one of the things is like a lot like Lysol, Pine Sol, um, some of those other ones, those are going to cause, like they can cause asthma. Um, so it's kind of like, I think if some of you have seen before, I've posted about, so if you use those products daily, um, or often, it can almost actually make it be like smoking cigarettes on your lungs. So it's very hazardous. Um, the other thing is that a lot of them have cancer causing, uh, chemicals in them. So I'm just saying this because even if you think you're wearing gloves, you're breathing stuff in. And, um, even if you think, well, it's, you know, it's just on the surface, but we touch those surfaces. We put our food on our surfaces, our guests do that. So that's just one, I just want to throw that out there. That's one of the reasons why we're doing this is to make sure that we're trying to um, get rid of those chemicals because everything has chemicals in it, but these are just chemicals that can certainly cause problems for us. So um, I use an, an app called Think Dirty. It's not really that bad, okay? It's not really that bad. I'll see if I can pull it up here even. Um, but it's a great way if you have a certain cleaner that, um, I'm just trying to see if I have it here, I can show you. So this is called Think Dirty App. You can type in, like if you have a product that you use right now, you think it's pretty good, you can type it in there and it will list the ingredients and rate the ingredients. So that way you might be like, well, my seventh generation, whatever, I think it's good. We'll look it up and see. And that way you'll know if it's something that's, that's harmful or not and it'll rate it for you. It's very handy to have. Um, it does lots of clean products. It does all kinds of body products and everything. So um, I guess I'll go through, I don't know, just quickly, like what our process is going to be. We have done, like um, I had mentioned before, we're switching to six night only in the summer. So people will leave Friday morning at nine and they will not check in until Saturday at four. Um, this is going to give us a lot of time to go air out the cabins. So my first role will be to go open all the cabins up, unless it's storming or something, but hopefully it's not. But open all the cabins up, collect the bedding, and let that sit for a while. And then we'll go in and we'll do the cleaning. Um, we'll clean like we normally clean um, on a normal Saturday, and then just we'll highlight spots that you are know, touch spots like, you know, light switches, remotes, handles. So we'll definitely hit those hard. And then we'll go over everything, spraying a disinfectant. Um, on couches, we're gonna use the same thing. We're gonna use a hydrogen peroxide mix and we're gonna spray everything on there. We'll spray carpets, we'll spray curtains. Um, we thought about setting out the silverware and spraying that right away so that that can have time to dry and then put it back before we leave the cabin. So um, that is what we're planning to do. Um, but we are fortunate that we will have two whole days to do that stuff. Um, so I don't know, that's kind of what we're doing. I don't know if anyone has any particular questions. Other than that, I see some coming on. Um, yeah, so. uh, Timberly, can you explain a little bit, I know you did at the spring workshop, but um, why you are choosing to add hydrogen peroxide and what someone mentioned um, in not necessarily being approved, but yeah, tell us where you found that it all of a sudden becomes approved as a disinfectant for us. Um, so the hydrogen peroxide, um, so that, like uh, Kim had said, is listed on the CDC. So what I have found is the cleaner that we have is not listed on the EPA. It is a plant-based cleaner, um, but you will see that the majority of those cleaners on there um, have the, the plants in them. So um, just because it's not listed on the EPA, we still use it. I've done my own home test on it and um, have found that it you know, it kills the same amount as Lysol and Pine Sol does. So that's why for us, we use it and we trust it, believe in it. Um, so we are just mixing that cleaner with the hydrogen peroxide. So it's just kind of a boost on our normal cleaner. Awesome, okay. 
Yeah, that makes sense. Um, okay, I am going to, let's hop to some questions. Um, speaking of hydrogen peroxide, um, when you're spraying down the dishes, are you, what are you doing with your dishes, first of all, Timberly, and are you doing hydrogen peroxide, or is that dangerous to use on dishes? Okay, so, um, all right, so I maybe ran over on the bus here, but I still believe we clean really well, and I'm not going to go wash every dish. I'm not, I, I have to trust that some of this is in the guest hands, okay, because we just can't physically do it all. Um, if I'm a guest coming to a place and I'm concerned, I'm going to wash the dishes before I use them. So I'm trusting that the dishes are clean. I'm going to check them. I'm going to do like I normally do on a Saturday. Um, the silverware we talked about, maybe just spraying that out on the countertop, spraying it down with the hydrogen peroxide cleaning mix, let that air dry. Um, so that's what we're going to do, but I'm not going to clean every dish. Just physically can't. I'm, I'm not doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think that that's, that's smart. What are you thinking, Joanna, about um, dishes and, <laughs> and, and your guest responsibility? I mean, yeah, what yeah. Okay, so Full disclosure, I'm on plan number 25, right? So I, I, after this, I'll have plan number 26 and that will change. So my plan is changing. I haven't, whatever. I don't know on the dishes. I'm, I'm, I'm super torn. I, Timberly's thoughts as we're preparing this about like settle it, settle it down, have really taken my anxiety down. So I'm going with that because um, yes. you know, my stress is important. Probably, I probably won't like do the lick it off thing that I'm, you know, uh, you, 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 you do, do that too. too. <laughs> I mean, who doesn't, who doesn't like drop a fork and then use your shirt sleeve to wipe it off? Like, okay. I mean, honestly, we all do that. I won't do that this year. I'll actually wipe it off, but I'm not, <laughs> not cleaning every dish and every thing. I will, I'll, Check him, but that's that's kind of about it. We have considered, we're strongly considering the Friday departure too, which would be a, a big change for us. Um, and part, if we do that, of course, only if we have that time, we thought about going through opening windows, spraying um, the high touch surfaces to protect my staff. And we thought about throwing all the silverware into the sink with a, with a solution of probably hydrogen peroxide. Um, I see, I'm looking at the question, someone's saying they talked to the Department of Health and hydrogen peroxide was not approved. Um, so this is also a frustration we discovered in our plannings for this is that talking directly to our own health inspectors, we all got wildly different information. Um, that's hard. So my inspector, we, we can use hydrogen peroxide for our food, uh, for our wash, rinse, sanitize in our food service. Um, so I'm taking that as, as that will work um, for me. So probably just a hydrogen peroxide solution and some soap. And I might leave the silverware in the sink overnight. Cause I don't, I think, or whatever. And let the cleaners just rinse and put away in the morning. Yeah. Okay. But only if I have the extra time. Otherwise I, I absolutely cannot do that. Yeah. Know, like, yeah. What are you thinking, Kelly? I know that they stress that soap and water is super, super effective. So let's just do that with our dishes and keep it simple. I don't think we need to be kind of going into that because they mentioned in the documents that I believe got sent out to everybody that soap and water is so effective and you can't necessarily use that for bathtubs and things like that but um, that's what we plan to do and um, do we plan to go back in after guests have put away the clean dishes no but if anyone asks we we can say you know feel free to throw them in the dishwasher and do a sanitation cycle um, so yes yeah yeah keep it simple if you can Keep it simple. Think about if you're the guest. I mean, I'm just, I, I kind of just sat down yesterday and go, if I'm going to, if I want to go on a vacation right now, I'm putting it in my own hands to do what I feel is right. So I'm going to trust that, you know, the linens are clean. I'm going to trust that things are clean. But if I feel like I need to do something extra, I'm going to probably just do it myself. If I feel like I need to wipe the playground handle down, I'm going to do that. Now, would it be nice to have the hand sanitation stuff there? Sure. But I'm not going to I don't, I think we have to remember that the guest has to have, I mean, with a lot of stuff, they have to have some, you know, some people are not going to care at all. Some are going to hype, be hypersensitive. So you're going to have that gamut. There's no way you'll be able to please every single person on everything you're doing. So do the best that you can and, and leave a little bit for them. I mean, they can do some of that stuff. They, if they're concerned, they will take the extra steps. I, I certainly would. Yeah. 
So yeah. even if it's cleaned already and it's put away and then we go back through and re-clean again, what's to say that we didn't spread it to them and they, are the guests going to trust that? So honestly, to me, it just seems like an extra step and something we really don't have time for on Saturdays, but that's just my yeah. thought. And that's one thing we have to think about for sure. Um, well, okay. So, I mean, unless anyone wants to raise hands um, to ask an audible question, I think we can keep going. Um, so yeah, about floor cleaner and yeah, yeah, go ahead. I'd love to hear what Timberly's doing. <laughs> oh yeah. cleaners or, or floor um, I still use our, I use these, our thieves cleaner. I use on every floor type I have, and I also use it on carpet and whatever. I, I haven't had any problems with discoloration. Are you going to add hydrogen peroxide to it or no? Just your thieves cleaner. Not for cleaning, just like the normal floor. I won't. Um, I may go over and spray like the couches with the disinfectant stuff, but not, not the floors and stuff. Yeah, sounds good. And I mean, yes, I, I feel like we may have addressed this, but maybe we can say it in another way about why you clean dirt first and then disinfectant and not necessarily using a soaked towel. Um, does anyone want to say that one more time? I mean, as just far as like you want to go over just clean surfaces, like and then more, disinfect. And then disinfect. <laughs> and a couple more questions about that. Spray, yeah. And so I, I think that disinfecting step is kind of the step that maybe some of us have not done before. I always just kind of clean stuff and just assumed it was clean because you're you know, using friction, you're using a cleaner. Um, so now it's kind of an extra step to make sure. So you gotta remember that, you know, like airing cabins out, it helps weaken the, the viruses. And, you know, the more friction you're scrubbing with, it weakens the viruses. So you're weakening it all. And so by the time you go over and put that disinfectant, most of it, you're going to see all of it? Absolutely not. So you have to accept that. Yeah. Okay, well, awesome. Thank you, ladies. Um, Joanna, if you're good, I might jump to you sure. uh, regarding, and this is kind of what I'm thinking, whatever you want to do, but what are you thinking for you? What are you going to do for your teams? How are you structuring your teams? Um, sure. You know, any ideas, thoughts you've had? Um, so I'm going to go ahead and mute and stop Timberly. Thanks, Kelly. I'm going to stop you and go to you. Um, okay. I'm here. I'm going to turn my video off. Sounds good. Okay. I'm going to talk just a little bit. I, you know, honestly, sometimes in this, I'm now I have more questions <laughs> than answers, but I'm going to do my best for you to share what I'm going to do. Um, like I was saying, we're considering that Friday departure would be a big change for us. Um, but I'm focused on needing that extra time and letting the cabin sit. I, I was hoping for 12 hours um, before my cleaners go in. So that was kind of my goal. We were gonna do you know, any time by like Friday at 9 p.m. thinking that would give me 12 hours. I'm, for some reason I'm focused on that. Did I read that number somewhere? No, I just <laughs> I feel good about it. Um, I have not made a decision on betting. I know we're coming to that. So I'm hoping to gain some insights today from everybody else. My cleaning crews, I have five crews and they're typically four people. Um, I've heard, I'm hearing, you know, in the chat line and from other conversations about people making their groups smaller. Um, I've, I've leaned on my people. So I've checked in with all of them and asked them if they have concerns, do they want smaller groups? Are they, would they like to work alone or anything? Um, so far, no one has expressed to me that they want to do that. Um, so I'm, as of right now, assuming I can hire everyone I need, I'm, I'm going to stick with groups of either three or four. They usually spread out in the cabin. So I think they can stay pretty physically distanced even in those groups. So I hope to keep those the same. Um, I've ordered masks and gloves, so I plan to provide any of that for them. If I'm being quite honest, I don't know they'll want them. Um, I haven't, I'd be curious if people are gonna require their staff to wear them. Um, again, I think we need to let people make some, some of their own decisions too, right? So I don't know, I'm weighing that one. Curious all of your thoughts. Um, the products I'm going to use, I'm planning a, a lot like what Timberly is talking about and everyone's been talking about, um, but hydrogen peroxide and rubbing alcohol. Timberly gave me a recipe or a book that had a recipe in it at the fall conference, which I, I'm calling Super Thieves, which is it's virtually like the thieves cleaner with some um, 
hydrogen peroxide. So I've actually been using that in my house all winter with the plans of using it just because I liked it. So maybe now that looks like it's going to work well as planned um, for a different reason than I thought. I can share. It's a pretty easy recipe that I can I'd happily share. Or Timberly probably has it. Um, I did. I bought that Force of Nature thing. I'd never heard of it. Um, but as it's been coming around the chat line, I did purchase two starter kits. And there was a 40% off coupon if anyone's interested. And so it really wasn't super expensive. I think it was like $53 for the starter kit, um, which is the charger and a bottle and some, some capsules. So I plan to try that. I can't find that seventh generation spray anywhere. What I, I wanted that. Um, I think I can make some with Timberly's guidance using thyme oil. So I, may, I probably will home make something that I can spray around. For the soft surfaces, I... Um, was worried about that guidance from Department of Health that said you have to clean like carpets and furniture with soap and water. But in talking with my, our inspector or whatever, the one who comes to our property, she was um, unaware of that. And when I showed it to her, she said, oh, that does not sound reasonable to me. I will talk to my supervisor. Um, Cause I said to her, I just, that's not something I can accomplish. And she said, absolutely not. That's not reasonable. So I am going to go with that. Uh, right now and just also remember to be reasonable here um like i said i haven't decided on the dishes yet like i'm considering doing washing all cutlery but i don't want to do disposables um again uh, we're trying to we're trying to think long term for our property and that much waste just kind of makes me <laughs> twitchy so i'm hoping not to do that i'm going to try to stick within my value set um for that I'm reading, I've been writing notes this whole time, you guys. So what else? That might be it. Yeah, no, that sounds, that's great. I love how you mentioned masks and gloves. Mm -hmm. um, same with me. Like I have, I have them ordered. I mean, it's, it's up to you all, obviously in the cleaners, if they choose to use them, unless you make strict guidelines around it. Um, and that was a question that Tina asked too, is if cleaners have preferences to clean alone, are you gonna let them do that? Or how are you gonna structure it, Joanna, if, if a cleaner feels a certain way about a team? Um, I will try to meet their needs, um, but it also has to work for my process too. Yeah. I mean, with the quantity of cabins we have, if someone was really uncomfortable, I probably could set them a cabin ahead cleaning bathrooms and they could probably sure. be alone. It doesn't work perfectly. I mean, because, you know, typically when you're done at the bathroom, you go out and help in the kitchen. So now we've eliminated that help. It's not my favorite. Um, I, and honestly, Tina, I don't know. I mean, I know Kelly could probably speak to that. Her cleaners like to clean alone and they, um, that's how they have their team set up. Um, but I don't think the concern would be sharing it necessarily with each other. If they, that is their concern, then I would require everyone on the team to wear a mask. Cause isn't that what they say is that really the mask is to prevent sharing it to the person next to you, not even necessarily yourself. Um, so maybe that's what I would do, but I think it just depends on what your preference is your cleaners. I mean, I would certainly, like Joanna said, send someone ahead, but I don't know if it's, I don't know if that's really going to help with that specific concern. Um, I did, someone asked, Janine asked about ordering masks. I absolutely did not order N95 masks. I did not order medical masks. Um, I was very specific because I don't want to take those away from the medical community. Um, and I think that these will still do the trick. I, I was thinking about asking um, one of my cleaners from last year to make my cleaners a bunch of masks, but I, I'm, I decided I wasn't going to go there. So um, I'm splitting a bunch of masks with Joanna, with uh, my other neighbor resort, um, Jim Worley. Uh, I don't, so splitting. Um, I found them on discountmugs.com of all places, but they have them in stock. So that's one thing too that we are utilizing is bulk ordering, um, going in with other resorts if you can. I mean, I'm sure if you open it up on the chat line or the Facebook group, 
um, or just reach out individually to resorts that are in your area. I'm sure people are looking for supplies and would be willing to go in on you just to bring that price down a little bit. Um, same thing with gloves. I'm splitting with, you know, Jim and another re neighbor resort, splitting sanitizer with another resort. Um, so yeah, that's definitely something um, that, you know, you can do. Um, what else? Do you see other questions popping up, Joanna? I can open everyone. This is kind of the end of like the structured piece of the call. So we can definitely just open it up for random questions. Um, and then once we get done with like the actual inside cleaning, then let's move to bedding and laundry. Um, if everyone's good with that. So I'm going to go ahead and start the rest of the panel's video and then let's just let's uh, knock out some questions. Okay, first of all, too, I feel like, Timberly, that was a good reminder to take a breath. Someone else also wrote about taking a breath. I feel like I am setting the tone for the call and I'm like up here a little bit. So <laughs> I think Timberly is right. Let's take a breath together. Our guests trust us. We trust our cleaners and our cabins. I walked around my cabins yesterday for kind of the first, I've been in some of them for the first time and they are clean. Like they, y'all, we have clean cabins. People are only using them for a small, small portion of the year. Um, so compared to people's houses, it's just, right? By the time you get out any of those decorations, um, any of that extra stuff, like cleaning goes so fast, especially if you have a good team of people that you trust. Um, so taking a breath, I'm going to do that myself. We got this. We are, we know what we're doing. We are experienced and check this out. We have like 60 resorts on this call. Like we're all experts, even though I say I'm a newbie, we're all kind of experts <laughs> at cleaning. I was going to say too, I, you know, I, when we've been switching over um, our summer to just six nights, so I've been making calls and reaching out to um, these guests and talking to them a little bit about our plan. And I would say 90% of them are like, we're not concerned about catching it at your resort, like in the cabin. It's kind of like the traveling back and forth or, you know, you know, or they're like, if we did catch it, you know, would the hospital be okay? Or would we have to go home? So I don't think they're as concerned with the cabin. I think it's just, you know, the whole thought of it and the traveling and the gas station and getting groceries at a different place and stuff. So um, most of them are like, you guys clean your cabin really well and this and that. So I think I really do believe that a majority of the guests feel like the cabin's okay. Like the cabin's fine, you know, maybe touching the, you know, park swing set might be a concern or something. So they might not use it, but so just, yeah, I think most guests are okay with the cabin. Yeah. Yep. Um, I, yeah, exactly. Kim, if you want to hop on video, you may think you just have to accept, but no pressure if you don't want to, Kim. Okay. Um, <laughs> um, I'm so, busy answering questions, typing. <laughs> good, good, great. Um, are there any that you want to highlight that you're responding to? Uh, no. <laughs> uh, one person was asking about oven cleaners and oh, what yes. we're all using. So yes. and I guess we can talk about that a little bit, um, but I don't want to waste too much time because we want to really focus on, I think, COVID-19 stuff. But uh, in the fall, I use baking soda and vinegar um, recycled out of the baking soda boxes that I use in the refrigerators and freezers. So um, we just sprinkle it on wherever it needs to be spritz it over with some vinegar and let it bubble. And if the longer you leave it, the better it does. And that's worked since um, my 25 years ago when I was cleaning ovens in apartments, which nobody ever cleans in their freaking apartment. But fortunately, most of us in the resort industry know that, um, at least for my guests, they hardly use the ovens at all, which is such a blessing. They're mostly outside using the grill. So that's a wonderful thing. Anyway, what do other people use and should we move on to oh, more COVID things? <clears throat> yeah, um, so there's a couple questions I think about going back to our cleaners themselves, protecting them. Um, what are your thoughts um, on, once again, providing those things? There, Bonnie asked a question, are you gonna require long sleeve and pants? Um, I typically, this might sound gross, but I typically go in barefoot because I like to feel the sand. I need like, I use my hands and I use my feet 
to feel if the cabin's clean. Like, so I'm definitely going to have to adjust um, a little bit. So are you guys going to make requirements, long sleeve, long pants? No, Timberly, go ahead. No, no I, I mean, I need the cleaners. So they're valuable assets. So whatever they are comfortable doing, I will do my best to make them comfortable um, because I need them. So yeah. I'm involved in another group doing other thing. I'm involved in a bunch of groups. We have decided in on, um, it's a mentoring group and we decided we would provide the mentors with the information. So based on the current recommendations, these are some strategies that could keep you safe. And then we're going to say like, you've been provided the information, you're going to do what you want. And I think I'm going to use that same strategy for my cleaners. So here are some things, a mask available if you want it, gloves available if you want it, long pants if you want, but I'm not going to tell them what to do. Yeah. And that's really what this is meant to be too. This is like, let's provide the resources. Let's talk it out. But really what is going to work for you in your resort is 100% your choice. Um, I tell you, I'm not looking forward to having to do the sniff test on things because you know, you, we all go in those cabins. You're like, what is that? And you have to get down and sniff it. <laughs> I don't want that job this year. <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. So there's lots of talk about masks. Um, yeah. If you have someone that could sew you a mask, I mean, I was thinking if I did go that route, I would just throw them in with my laundry for that day and have them ready to go for them the next week. Um, I just am not going to worry about that. But if I, I think that's smart. Um, someone found seventh generation spray at Target. Once again, going back to bulk ordering, I mean, I bug probably the heck out of Joanna, but I text her on a regular basis, like, hey, I found this in bulk. Do you want to go in on me? Um, so if you are finding those things, like, let's share, let's open it up. So seventh generation, if someone has a connection um, directly with or whatever, mass, whatever it may be, um, to get those priced down and, you know, we meet in the middle someday, hey, I think we're all for that. Um, okay, any additional questions i see um, jim or jim's asking about um different rate oh where'd it go yeah Sorry, i didn't answer that oh you answered it yeah. okay uh maybe he asked, what did he ask oh okay. jim asks i'm not finding it but i read it too oh yeah Kimberly, i know you have a six day rate already are you giving that rate to everyone and joanna are you giving a discount for a six day stay if you go to that we are. I mean, we already have it structured, so we're just giving them the six night rate. So that would be, that's what we're going to do. Yeah. So in plan number 27, because I have had <laughs> one, I'm just kidding. I don't know. I mean, here's what I'm tentatively thinking. If we switch, we won't ask people to leave till late. They'll still have the whole day Friday. Um, we don't have a six night rate. And if I'm being, my most blunt answer is <laughs> this year is costing me nothing but money and making me, I'm like losing, I'm in the, I can't give you a discount. So I am not wanting to give a discount. I'm hopeful that I won't have to. I think my eyes started twitching. <laughs> so apparently this is a stressor for me, but I'm hopeful I, I don't want to offer a discount. We would let them stay till like 9 p.m. Um, on Friday. Cause I just want, I just want to get 12 hours, but I don't want yeah. to offer. And so I am doing everything I can to not do six days just because I'm thinking of the communication and I also cannot afford to do discounts. So yeah, I'm holding out, I think as long as I can for that. But Joanna, you Joanna, when you do, if you did that six night, does that give you more time actually cleaning or is it just so you can air out? It would just be to air out. I wouldn't clean. Yep. I wouldn't do any cleaning Friday. I just want an empty cabin for 12 hours. Okay. Kelly, do you have anything? What are you, so there was a question about separating teams. Um, your structure is different. Maybe you can explain how you structure your cleaning teams and then your thoughts about that request. Did you see that? Yeah. So all of our, we've always done um, cabin cleaners have their own cabins assigned. So they've always had their own cabins to themselves. And I don't know. I mean, we can't really afford to lose any cleaners. We actually need more right now. <laughs> so um, we're going to encourage that they practice social distancing. Um, and I guess I just wanted, we are providing cloth masks and gloves. Um, I guess we can recommend and strongly recommend that they wear them, but we can't 
I mean, be policing that and going in the cabin. Um, obviously, I think Emily, that's a really good point. If the cleaners aren't wearing masks, or aren't they kind of negating it if they have it? Um, that's a really good point, but we can't really force them to, I guess, to either, but we'll strongly encourage them to wear masks. Um, right now we're opening cabins and if it's kind of aired out for three days, we're not really worrying about it until we start turning over cabins. But <clears throat> I wanted to kind of stress the fact that we are all, everyone is kind of up here. Understandably, nobody wants this. Nobody wants our guests to get this. We want to uh, have a as better, best season as we can with all that's going on. And I think we're going to do the best that we can and just know that you're not going to get every nook and cranny. Maybe someone sneezed into that, that crack in the wall that you didn't disinfect. And honestly, um, I just think you can do what you can do what you can control. And from everything else, just trust that that's all you can do. And don't spend, you know, five hours in a cabin trying to just get everything, do the best you can. But I don't know. I think we're going to pull through this and I'm just trying to end on a positive note because um, we really can't spend, you know, a week cleaning every surface in every single cabin, but that's just my thought. Yeah. All right. I feel pretty good about where we're at with questions. If you all have questions, um, please try to put them in the Q&A. It's just a little bit easier to be able to answer um, and see them come through. Um, it's okay in the chat. It's just a little bit easier to keep track of if you type it in the Q and A. Um, I am seeing we missed a couple questions regarding uh, rags. What do you all use for rags? Do you use paper towels? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, we just have a bunch of old rags that we take, and then you use them. They go, and then they just get laundered every time. I don't know. Nothing fancy. Yeah, that's what we do too. They're a bunch of old washcloths. I have like three baskets full. Send them with a team of cleaners. They, and you know, I'm gonna encourage them to go through them more probably than what they typically would. I think sometimes I try to challenge myself like, okay, I'm gonna do one rag for this part of the bathroom and then, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And then do the toilet last so that I use the full, life of that rag. I am just going to tell people, use as many rags as you want that you feel comfortable, switch them out, and then we'll launder them. Um, so yeah, paper towels. Oh gosh. Someone last year I had a new cleaner was like shocked that I didn't use paper towels. I, no way. Like, no way. There's, that'd be insane. Plus I think, Timberly, you probably know the science behind this. Isn't it actually <laughs> like, Bacteria wise, like better to use a rag than a paper towel? I don't know. Side note. I'm not gonna specify on that. <laughs> I have no idea. Okay. I don't, I don't think, like you said, just use as many rags as you need to. Yes. I have yes. one additional comment. Um, so uh, Ryan and Emily, my stepdaughter and son-in-law, um, they've been great uh, about disseminating all this information that we're getting through the board and the uh, resort chat line. So they helped me create a business plan based on the template from, uh, who, who gave that to us? Minnesota, uh, I don't know, DEED perhaps, I'm not sure. But um, in looking through that and trying to process how we're going to handle things, um, one of the things, talking about regs, I think maybe what we'll probably do is just remind, maybe put a flyer up where the, our, our cleaners every week when they're here, they actually put their hours up on a squeegee board right inside of a, our lodge where all of our supplies are kept. And I think that's a place where I'm gonna, we've got some posters there, the stuff that you're supposed to have. I think that's where I'm gonna try to emphasize every week a couple of different new procedures like, okay, people, remember, don't reuse the same rags in one cabin with another. Um, we've got plenty of regs. That is part of the business plan that we have come up with. And that's a recommendation by the Minnesota Department of Health. So please don't do that kind of thing. And please remember to wear your mask if you can. But honestly, we, I sweat my ass off uh, cleaning. I don't know about you guys, but with a mask on sweating, that is going to be annoying as hell. So I don't know how I'm going to there's yeah I think just like what Kelly said there's no way we're going to be able to police our cleaning staff so I think we're just our job is to do the best we can provide the supplies that we can continue our communications encourage what we can 
and um, that's all we can do. That's all we can do. Yep. And, and I think it, it'll be fine. Yes. Yes. It'll be good. My um, one um, barrier I, on my rags, I have, I'm a, like you all, I have tons of rags. Um, but my Norwex, I really like some of my Norwex products, right? But we're, I mean, I'm asking them to use two window cloths for the whole day. And I, that piece, I guess I'm possibly rethinking for this year, but. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's one thing I wanted to add. And I, I don't know if I'll hold off one more year, but um, Emily Neely asks, if your cleaners are not wearing masks and gloves, aren't they negating the cleaning that they're doing in regards to spreading viruses? And shouldn't the person doing the disinfecting step definitely wear a mask and gloves? Anyone want to take that? I mean, I think if you are doing it right, you're disinfecting when they walk out and that sets for 10 minutes, it should be disinfecting anything that touched that surface. As far as anything that like they might be breathing, um, let's say you're done cleaning at two and your check-in starts at four or five. I mean, if you're leaving windows open, I, I pers I'm not worried. I'm not worried about it. Does anyone else want to share their thoughts on the person, the cleaning person spreading? I, I, not gonna worry about it either. I kind of feel the same way. Um, I'm not gonna make them wear a mask again because I don't know that I'm gonna wear a mask. Um, I I don't know. I it's a good point. It's a good point. I mean, I guess they could be breathing out if they had it and didn't know they had it. They could be breathing it out. But again, you're assuming you're disinfecting as you're leaving, and that little bit hopefully disseminates. Yep. Yep. Um. Once again, about regs, someone asked just like about the process. So, I mean, how we typically do it is we, I send, you know, with each team, a basket, a laundry basket full of regs. Um, and then I send with them like a plastic bag that they just throw their dirty regs into. I collect them at the end and I wash them at the end. So they, they're traveling with a clean basket and they're traveling with a bag for the dirty regs. Um, to, just to answer that. Um, let's, one more question about employees and taking temperatures. And then I think let's switch to bedding because it's already about 1040. Yeah. Okay. Temperatures, taking employees temperatures. What are your all thoughts? I'm probably not going to be honest. I ordered a gun in bulk. I split it with a couple other resorters. Once again, I discount mugs. Um, and so I will have it available if guests want to check their temperatures. Um, there is one, Lori said she is going to take temperatures. I am hoping I'm still waiting on one of my friends who is an RN. He's uh, actually going to work on an operating plan to share with you all um, about taking temperatures for employees, if that's something you want to do, um, as, and guests if you want to do. Um, so I think that's really up to you. He, from how he explained it to me is that some employees and employers get a lot of comfort from doing that. At the end of the day, I mean, you could be asymptomatic. So he also said it doesn't really make a difference, um, except maybe that mental part. So if that makes you feel good, if that makes your employees feel good, if you want to be able to share that with your guests, that that's precautions that you're doing, then yes, 100% do that. Um, okay. Let's shift gears to bedding because everyone is like, what the heck do we do with bedding? Okay. So, um, Kim, can I go to you? Sure. Okay. <clears throat> Kim, I'm going to, um, <clears throat> ladies, thank you again. I'm going to stop your video and we'll pull you back in in a little bit. Okay. Go <clears throat> ahead, Kim. All you. <laughs> well, thank you. Um, I did send this PDF off in the resort group so you guys can look at it too, but um, I did find a source. I was trying to figure out how <laughs> we could possibly do the bedding thing this year. And, oh man, I just lost my screen. Hey, 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 hey there we go. Uh, I found a source. Uh, my, my issue was about uh, quilts. How are we going to handle that? How are we going to handle blankets? Do we need to handle pillows, mattress pads? I mean, we're just angsting over it. <clears throat> There's no way <clears throat> on our part, I can't afford to get a whole new set of everything. So because of that, 
I was trying to figure out if we could maybe do some tumbling for a few of those items in the dryer. Would that work? And I did find a resource of consumerlab.com uh, that um, tested this theory out um, somewhere or another. And you don't have to trust this, this source. Uh, you can certainly find it on your own. But it looked like what this is specific to COVID. Um, and I, I linked the source there so you can go ahead and check it out yourself. But it, it seems to claim that if your temperature of your dry, your clothes dryer is 158 degrees or higher, you can tumble a pillow or a blanket or what have you for five minutes, and that should be enough to kill the virus. If your clothes dryer temperature is between 132 and 158 degrees, you need a half an hour or 30 minutes of tumbling to get that COVID virus killed. And if you have less than 132 degrees, it's not gonna kill it <clears throat> by at least dry time only. In that case, you would need to do a different option, maybe just wash it first and then dry it. <clears throat> but I thought that was interesting and I'm thinking that that might be something that we will do for possibly blankets or possibly something else. I haven't quite put that thing in place yet. <clears throat> One thing that we will probably do for us and maybe I'll, uh, you know, when I was coming up with this flyer, I was just, Okay, this is, these are the options we're gonna do here, people. These are some things that we can choose from. So I just kind of went down the list here and it helped me focus on what options to do. And I'm like Joanna too. I am constantly changing my mind about things just depending on, I think once we get going, we're gonna decide that we're gonna change some things too in, while we're doing it. That's a natural process. But for quilts and comforters, I think the options are removed from the cabin this year. We've already talked about that a lot. You could wash them between each guest turnover. That seems like it would be a hard on your quilts and your comforters. You could purchase another set <clears throat> to switch out. Uh, I do not have the monies to do that. <clears throat> Some of you might. You could disinfect between guests by saturating with a liquid EPA approved solution. However, like Emily pointed out, I am doubtful that that will be effective. Um, maybe, maybe it will. Um, I, I might just try that anyway and just spritz it on at least the pillow areas or, or you know, of the mattress pad or something. Or you could tumble your, your comforters in a clothes dryer for appropriate amount of time. <clears throat> I think for me, I'm gonna choose to just take them out of the cabins this year. That's my, my option. Blanket options. Like you, we have two blankets for each bed, um, sometimes more. So we have enough uh, to keep one washed blanket on the bed. Uh, with the set of sheets and we are going to take, I think for today, I think we're going to take that spare blanket completely out and I'm going to communicate to my guests that we've done that so that if they want to bring more blankets with them, they can. That way we can keep a clean blanket, blanket in the lodge and have that available to put back on the bed for the next week. So um, other, otherwise you can, other options that people are talking about, ask your guests to bring them, bring their own you can wash them all between guest turnovers. Uh, you can purchase some more blankets and have a complete other set. Um, doing option four is what I just talked about. You could also try tumbling in your clothes dryer for the appropriate amount of high heat or disinfect with an EPA approved solution. So pillows, kind of similar. Um, we at our resort have started to put extra pillows on all the queen and king beds. So we have come a long way already with extra pillows. The pillow thing was giving me some grief here because that's kind of a, an area. Pillows seem like the riskiest area to me for soft surfaces. These are where people's heads are and where they're respirating out. <clears throat> so I'm a little bit more concerned about that. So with pillows, options are you can ask guests to bring their own, you can wash them in between, which seems like way more work than you can afford to do within a, even a 24 hour period. Purchase another set to switch out. In fact, I'm thinking seriously about doing that here at Crowing Crest. You can disinfect by spritz. You could certainly do that or at least attempt to. Tumble it in the clothes dryer. That's a lot of pillows. Uh, purchase sealed waterproof zippered protector cases. Um, I've looked into that a little bit. Uh, one of our vendors or associate members of the CMR, uh, I think it's called In Room Supplies. I did contact him and he does have some very reasonable pillowcase zippers. So I, I first thought about maybe getting 
triple zipped or maybe getting, I mean, like, like at a buck 50, a zipper case, that's fairly minor to think about that possibility. I mean, if you're talking a few, a few dozen, you're talking a couple hundred bucks, that might be worth doing. I just still don't know how many layers you need to uh, be worried about COVID stuff. So I, I'm not sure. Leaving that out there is just another option. Um, or you could purchase an extra pillowed zipper case and just change it out. If you get a waterproof one, you could certainly zip that out. Uh, it's just one more extra step to do on a Saturday, but it would be a way to do it. My caveat about some of those waterproof ones are that they feel like a diaper when you're laying on them. So I'm wondering how comfortable guests would feel having a, a really sealed waterproofed um, pillowcase or zippered pillow protector on there. And that's, that goes the same with mattress pads, same thing. You can uh, either wash them between guests, leave them on, spritz it down, disinfect it, uh, tumble in the clothes dryer, uh, uh, or purchase a sealed zipped waterproof protector um, and disinfect it each week. So those are sort of the options that we've all been talking about. And I'm curious about what other people are choosing too. So there's my portion of it. Kayla, you can please open it up to other people. Let's sure. see what others are doing. Okay. Sounds good. Um, all right. I'm going to bring our panelists back. Yeah. So get ready to participate. Tell us what you're thinking about blankets. Um, I did pull together. I'm curious what in-room supplies quote is. Um, I did pull a quote. There was a, um, a guy who reached out to me last year who gave me, um, one of those, um, oh gosh, clean, ra clean brands or whatever, a, a mattress encasement to try. Um, so I did get a quote for that. Um, let me pull that up for everyone. I don't know exactly if I'm going to do it quite yet. Um, but that is one thing I did ask a quote for in bulk. So if you all do want to think about it, I can either give you information on how to get in touch with this guy, or we could potentially, I could organize getting it together. So <clears throat> basically there's two different types. There is the little bit cheaper that lasts for, he says around three to four years, these bug tech they're called at the bottom of my screen. Those are um, a little bit cheaper. And then at the top are the pro encasements. And then there is a pillow, a pro pillow encasement. And this is about $8 a piece. He said, if we got a bulk order together, he could probably drop it down to at least, um, at least $1 off on each thing. So potentially $7 for that pillow encasement. Um, one thing too, they did get um it tested for coronavirus and it was proven to the highest level the cdc gave it the highest level of protection so i can send that out too i haven't decided if i'm going to do a bulk order yet just based on money but, um i'm i'm thinking very much the same as far as kim goes i think i'm gonna keep blankets extra blankets in potentially a like a plastic vinyl bag that's you know has a little sign saying these are clean and sanitized if you use them leave them out um and then just you know work from there um how else what are you thinking timberly what are you thinking kelly and joanna about bedding <laughs> uh, well uh yeah so we are taking the bedspreads off um we will have those up in the lodge just because i don't know i don't want to I feel like if I, maybe people would be good and not put stuff back if they used it. I, I would hope not, but I said, I will put a note that if they need it to let us know and we can bring something to them. Um, and then blankets, we are just switching out with the sheets every week um, or every turnover, every guest or whatever. Um, mattress pads, we are not washing every week. Um, and the pillow protectors, we are not washing every week. Um, the way I understood from the health inspector was as long as there is a barrier between the person and the pillow or whatever, then that's enough. So as long as you have that one barrier, it sounds like that's enough. Of course, every health inspector might give you a different, you know, understanding. So I don't know, but um, we have a lot of the, the zip, full zip cases, mattress pads. Um, and he said that, you know, as long as there's no actual mattress showing where it could stick to, it should be fine. I don't know. Yeah. 
I don't know either. And especially when they're talking about having at least three layers for masks to uh, be a barrier. And, you know, so this quote I got from uh, the in-room supplies, he's talking about three styles. Uh, a three gauge vinyl is $1.50 a piece. So that's pretty cheap. But again, that's that vinyl stuff, which I imagine is going to be crinkly and possibly not very comfortable for guests. Although that would be a way to, for them to be sure. I don't know, maybe we could, add, I don't know, give them an option or something. I'm not sure. He's got some other things about, here's a waterproof zip, zippered thing that's still breathable. And to me, that means there's cloth there. So uh, I don't know what to think about this either, you guys. So uh, I'm interested to see what, what Kelly maybe is going to be doing this summer. So we kind of are, we haven't really decided, but we are kind of leaning towards just providing sheets and just taking out the pillows and blankets. We don't have enough blankets to wash in between. It'd be nice if we did. We might look into ordering them, but again, uh, with financial, you know, whatever, we don't really maybe want to take that on. Um, the one thing we may leave the pillows and just switch out the pillowcases if it sounds like that is okay. But like you said, the three layers. So I think honestly too, I, we've talked to a couple guests and kind of tossed the idea out there, you know, we, we might just have sheets and bring your own pillows and blankets. And they said, yeah, I think that's good. And I think people will feel confident that their bedding is clean then too. So that's just probably what our, we're leaning towards doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyone else? I'm, I'm least certain about what to do with the bedding. Um, I mean, we have so many beds. Some, some of you can relate to that. So many beds. So um, our health inspector said similarly to Timberly's, it's just the things that people are coming into direct contact with, um, which made me feel better. So I'm strongly considering um, a second set of, those, of zippered pillow protectors. But Kim, I hate the vinyl feeling, I'm not putting those on. <laughs> I despise sleeping on plastic personally, so I just don't want to do that. Um, I don't want to invest in all those and then not want to keep using them. So, so I'm thinking of a whole new set of zipper pillow covers. I'm probably going to take my quilts out. However, when I talk, or my bed spreads, but when I talked to my health inspector about that, she was like, oh, I don't, I don't know if you need to do that. So I thought, oh, okay. Um, and she, I said, well, I, I can't wash them every week. That I just physically can't do that. And she said, well, yeah, that's not really feasible either. So do, what, do what's feasible is what she said. So it was nice and vague. I don't know what that means. <laughs> um, so she, she was, that made me kind of confused. I'm like, but it also made me calm down a little bit. Like maybe I'm <laughs> being a little overboard. Um, yeah. I did talk to a couple of hotels too. One yeah. of them our cleaners works at and they are not washing blankets um, or pillows or the pillow covers in between people. They're putting a clean sheet over top of the blankets, which is kind of a little, <laughs> to me, it seems a little, but, and then another uh, hotel is washing everything, mattress pads, pillows, pillowcases, pillow covers, everything. So I think there's a lot of gray area and I think you kind of have to do what's right with what supplies you have and what you can afford to uh, bulk up on. So. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah, um, there's a couple questions out, well, more comments of what people are doing. If you want to verbally share your plans, like please um, raise your hand and I can unmute you um, and you can explain to everyone else. This is really, this portion, I think we're ready just to completely open it up more than we have even before. Um, so if you want to share your plans, please, we are, we are all ears, as you can hear, we're all still trying to figure it out too. Um, so raise your hand. Um, Lee says his plan is to use a fitted bottom and use the flat and sandwich the al alternative down blanket, remove the quilt, and then pillows. Um, it sounds like he has that same, that clean rest pillow protectors that I was showing, and now they'll add an old zipper protector over that and wash that extra layer. Hmm, that's a good idea. I could, that's, that's a good idea. Um, what else are you all seeing? Just letting guests know, Kathy says, letting guests know that you are, what you're doing, and then they can decide if they want to bring their own pillows, blankets, and linens, et cetera. Definitely great idea. I mean, I think right now it's all about that level of communication. Um, if you're going to, you know, depending on your comfort level, if you're going to make it clear across all channels, like 
this is what we're providing, please do this. Or if you choose to reach out one-on-one -on -one and ask what a guest wants to do, I think that's based on your capacity and um, your relationship with your guests maybe. Um, a lot of people are taking out pillows, it sounds like, and asking guests to bring their own. I'm kind of leaning towards that also, and also for the added benefit of not having to buy new pillows this year, actually. Um, just thinking of how to save money. Um, what else? I would just say I'd probably throw in there too, again, trying to calm everything down. If you're a guest and you're concerned, you're going to bring probably your own pillow. So again, just breathe, do the best you can. Um, if they're super concerned, they're probably going to bring their own stuff. I, again, I probably would if I went somewhere. So yeah. I'm kind of doing on that. So just, yes, you can, but please don't go out and spend tons of money on stuff. Um, again, if the guest is concerned, they'll either reach out, ask you personally, and you can talk with them, or they'll probably bring their own, you know, something like that. I'm, I think majority of people probably bring their own pillows anyway, so. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, definitely. Okay, it, well, I guess I feel like one more thought. So I did talk to um, my laundry person, who I'm sure a lot of you use, um, in Park Rapids Kinkle Laundry. Um, so she wants a different process as well. So that's another thing to keep in mind is talking to the person that helps with laundry is how they want it. So I know there's been ideas thrown out there about guests uh, removing their own uh, blankets, removing their own sheets and stuff when they leave, um, which in theory I think is a good idea. I'm concerned about how are they taking that off? So are they you know, making it airborne by how they choose to take it off? So I think I've decided I'm going to put extra, you know, in all my notes that they're going to get this year, um, asking them, just leave the bed, just leave it. My cleaners will take care of it. Um, Kinkle, for example, she said they're not going to spot treat. So that means they don't want to open the sheets up before they go to the wash. So that's something that my cleaners and I will have to pay extra attention to um, and put, create a different laundry bag for stained sheets. Um, so I want my cleaners to be able to look at every sheet when they're, um, taking that bed off, you know, as quick as they normally would, um, and then carefully roll that sheet off the bed without making it airborne. So, um, and also our laundry person is now asking us to separate the pillowcases from the sheets. So that's another thing too. If you're not choosing to add pillows, that might save, save a step that now you need that extra time to later disinfect. Um, so yeah, that's another, another added layer to this fun thing of coordinating with whoever does your laundry and how they want it done. So any additional thoughts on that or any additional questions? Okay. I, I feel pretty good. My two-year-old is knocking on the door. Um, so I just want to remind everyone we have another call on Wednesday at 1 p.m. and that's to go over all of the communal spaces, group activities, like how do we handle those. Um, once again, if uh, you want to be on that panel, if you've thought through and you feel pretty good about your plans, please reach out to one of us so we can add you as a resource. I think that would be awesome to have some new faces. I mean, we're just figuring it out like you all as well. Um, also one thing, it might've been confusing, I might've jumped the gun a little bit. In the registration form, I, I asked the question if you are a CMR member or not. And I mentioned that the CMR is offering free membership for this year. So whether you've already paid for the year, um, that will just continue. So if you're already a member, you still get the benefit too. You are not losing out on that benefit. And then also, I believe if it hasn't already gone out, it will be going out to those that are non-members, um, inviting you to become a member for a year and the CMR will pick up um, your dues for that. So um, if you are confused about that, there will be more communication coming out. We just want as many voices as we can um, help figure this out. We want to support each other. Um, and that's what the Community of Minnesota Resorts is ultimately, you know, hoping to do for all of us is just be resorters helping resorters. So um, any, any final thoughts from anyone? How are we doing? Kayla, there's a question on the Q&A about, from yes. Chris, about removing extras from cabin. Yeah. Go um, ahead. Quick answer on that one. I don't have a lot of extras. Um, 
to start with, I've removed a lot of my mom's old stuff, honestly, tossed it. Um, <laughs> but don't tell her, you can tell her, she knows. <laughs> I asked my health inspector, I, as I read, I'm like, it sounds like I can't have curtains or blinds or drapes or balances, which I honestly was like, yes, I hate those anyway. <laughs> and she said, oh no, that, no, you can have all that. So again, a little bit mixed messages. So any of that extra like stuff that I've been getting rid of, I've already gotten rid of, but I'm not gonna remove um, like the pictures on the walls and stuff like that. I'm not gonna do and I'm gonna put up my balances unfortunately <laughs> um, yeah that's my and, plan i don't um, have extra blankets or pillows or throw blankets yeah i don't have that stuff anyway yeah me too so i agree with joanna too um the minnesota department of health even in their covid19 guidelines they're asking and requesting us to please get rid of as many soft surfaces as we possibly can in our hotel rooms and cabins. So for us, that means I've got pillows, uh, throw pillows and sofa throws in every cabin. I actually have a stuffed animal on every single sofa in all my cabins. I'm taking that out. Um, we have been putting uh, sets of hide bed sheets um, in every cabin and I'm gonna have to pull all those because I just, I'm on the fence about, uh, do I trust people? I don't know, I, I figure I'll just take them out and that'll just be one more thing that I can market to my guests by saying, hey, we are taking this COVID thing seriously. And if you do want a set of high to bed stuff, just text us and we'll get you a set. But this way we can kind of control it a little bit more and they will then know that we are trying to do our best for them. So. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, um, I didn't know how long this was going to go. I didn't put a time limit on, but we're about two minutes. There's one more in there, Kayla. Sorry, now they're coming through. Question. Oh, I, Everyone wants to get their question in. Yeah. So, okay. So I'm seeing this too. So we touched a little bit on upholstery and carpets. Um, once again, it's kind of your capacity level. We've talked through foggers. Um, I can also send out a link to a steamer that I'm looking at um, getting. Once again, it's capacity. Do you have the funds to buy those things? Do you have the time and the employees to help with that? Um, so those are things um, we've heard from different health inspectors, both Timberly and Joanna's um, regarding that. Timberly's is currently saying you do need to work on those things and Joanna's is currently saying you that's not feasible. So there are some mis mixed messages there. We will keep you up to date um, on how, you know, if more things come out. Um, Christy also asked about those extra things, playing cards, games, salt and pepper shakers. Um, I have decided that I'm going to replace salt and pepper shakers every week um, with the disposable ones. I'm not throwing away the ones. I'm just going to let them sit. I'm going to, I'm going to switch them out, let the old ones sit for a week and use those in the next. So switch them out, let the virus, whatever, mm. just sit. And um, cause it's only good for a little bit anyway. Right. Playing cards. I mean, all of those I'm, we don't, we don't put any extra stuff like that. They come into the lodge to get that. Um, and that's something we will discuss on Wednesday is how to handle games and lodge goods, um, things like that. So um, if- I would also if, encourage people, like if you can or feel comfortable, reach out to your health inspector. Yeah. I would say she was like super appreciative. I'd called, I, that can't hurt me in the long run, right? Um, cool. so I would reach out <laughs> to your health inspector, ask them if they have any, you know, guidance or run through what you're thinking. What does she or he think? Yeah. It was helpful. I kind of think too, if it's, if it's something that's going to be hard to clean probably and you can take it out, I would just take it out. Yeah. I mean, we have, we have like little boxes of scissors and dice and stuff. And we're just going to take them out because yeah. I can't sanitize each little piece of scissors every week. So stuff like that. Or, or you could put it on the guests uh, to sanitize if they want to use this then they can use their own sanitizer and I, I would so if you're not going to have your lodge open for them to come down and get extra games um i think well that's something we can talk about on wednesday but i'm, I'm not thinking about sanitizing all of that stuff either and i'm still probably going to leave some of my board games and puzzles in every cabin so and that's something too i think you can easily when you send out you know your reminder to your guests like here's your check-in time in two weeks here's what to bring check out our updated list of what to bring. We're asking that you bring your own dice and your own cards this time. Mm -hmm. I think that's okay. Same with salt and pepper, actually. Like they, 
they're probably fine with that. Maybe pot holders this time, they're bringing their own. Um, so things like that. There was a question, I don't remember where it was, I was meaning to come back to it, about leaving cleaner in the cabins for your guests. I am going to do that. I haven't purchased it yet, but um, I really like Timberly's idea and what she already does. Can you talk yeah. through that? Um, we just make a bottle. I actually brought one just in case you want to see. So this is what we put in there. Yeah. Um, it's already made up. Some people use it, some don't, but it's also nice when you're cleaning. If you're running low, like you can grab it quick and have it there. So we have that under one for each cabin. Yeah, that's perfect. I won one of those at um, the conference last year and that's what I use and it looks super cute. So I don't care if it's left out on the counter. Um, so yeah, I think that's what I'm going to try to do too. Yeah, I've been doing that too for about 20 years. And uh, as soon as uh, it wasn't the first year, but the second year we, we did that. So I've got a peppermint cleaner and a glass cleaner and a carpet. The glass cleaner is also a carpet spotter. And I put a label on that says carpet spotter. If you spill crap on the carpet, please clean it up. And mm -hmm. I actually leave a bucket with some rags and an extra squeegee in there. And ever since I started doing that, the cabins have been left so much cleaner. If they have access to cleaning things, they will use it. So yep. Maybe we could put, I, uh, now that you're mentioning it, maybe I could think about putting a disinfectant bottle down there too. I don't know. I'm not sure that that's necessary. So I got to think that through a little bit. Well, and one thing too, I was talking with, um, I can't remember, maybe Jennifer Bateman, but um, about leaving something in the cabin so they don't use their own. What if someone is bringing their own bleach mixture and they spray something that might then change the color of your table or chair. So if you add your own, you leave in as part of the thousand instructions this year to please use what you've provided. Um, I don't know, just, yeah, just one more thought to go along with that. Um, gosh, I, I feel good about this. I mean, once again, this was meant to give ideas. So now it's up to you to whittle those down and see what makes sense for you. Um, I, I feel pretty good about what I'm deciding to do. I mean, I haven't bought everything yet, but I feel confident in that. So um, thank you all for hosting and being a part of the planning as well. We will come together on Wednesday at one o'clock to talk all things communal, um, which I know are just burning questions, but similar style Q&A. So um, thank you all for joining us. Uh, thank you. Email email us messages questions anything like that kim sent out resources i will follow up um to the list that just registered with those to make sure everyone gets it um as well as the hydrogen peroxide and thieves mixture recipe um some pricing just all the resources we will follow up with kelly so. put that recipe in the chat too didn't you kelly i think i saw it over there somebody did i'll copy paste that all right Sounds good. Well, thank you everyone. Have a good rest of your day. Go get some sunshine because it's lovely, right? That's what it's <laughs> right. Thank it's you all so much. Thanks, Kayla. Thank you, Kayla. Thanks, Bye. ladies. Bye.